Hey, Real Green Ninja here. The video you're about to watch is a supplement to the existing tutorials and help videos already available on the Real Green website. I do take a more casual approach because I'm presenting this information as I would if you called in, although I may have a little fun with it. This video is based upon the information I, as a Real Green technician, would provide using my experience on the help desk. This video was created on my own time to assist with areas of the software that may be waiting for an official help video or tutorial. At the beginning of the training video, I will have the version of the service assistant the video was made with. I will also try to be as accurate as possible, but be aware, as service assistant updates are released, things may change. I'm using the name Real Green Ninja as not to stand out from the other amazing technicians that I work with. I hope the information in this video helps you, so grab a cup of coffee, and I hope you learn something new. Hey, Real Green Ninja here. Today we're going to talk about the History tab that's on the customer screen, so let's begin. I'm going to go ahead and grab a customer that I've already added some, you know, certain kind of transactions I want to, and we're going to go ahead and pull this customer up. And again, this is pretty much for most customers. Uh, we're going to go to the History tab. Now, under the History tab, this is the financial transactional history for these customers. And what that means is when you post production, which charges the customer's account, um, you know, if there's a price for it or whatever, um, when you put in a payment, when you make an adjustment on the account, okay, um, or once an installment charge tri gets triggered, it creates a line entry in this history tab. Once it's in there, we cannot delete it. There is one exception and I'll show you later on, but we cannot delete transactions as a rule of thumb that are in this history tab. All right. Um, there's a couple different views of the history tab. I usually have mine with the consolidated history off and the detail on. Uh, if I turn detail off, you'll see it give me a list and doesn't uh, it gets rid of that bottom half there. And if we go into consolidated history, um, we can go to detail again. It's going to go and show you what the different things entries are. So, for example, you got special job, installment. Payment received, net promoter score. So it's a little bit of a more plain English um, of what the transaction actually is. Now, again, I prefer looking at the consolidated history off and the detail turned on. Again, personal preference. Any everyone has their own. Now, under the consolidated history view, you can filter. You can say I only want to see certain things by hitting the little filter button and then check or uncheck the transactions that you want to see in the history. Again, most people don't even know this exists, so it's not one of those things that you have to worry about too, too much. But like I said, I like to show people different parts of the software that they may not be familiar with, just in case. Okay. Um, you can also click on like the treatment right here, hit go to, and it'll take you right to that job screen. So again, it's kind of a cool little uh, view that, again, most people don't use, but it's there if you want. Um, now, under the consolidated off detail on this is the view I normally have my my training data set to this is the one most common view that I see now in this view like I said before these are all the transactions that have been done to this account and again I you know got garbage data in there um, but like I said I do have a variety of the transactions so you'll see here if we go down we have a T which stands for treatment now a treatment is a round inside of a program all right so, for example, you'll see here, this is the L202, the late spring application, which is part of my lawn care program, all right? Um, S stands for special job. So if we go, like, uh, I think it's one's towards the top here. There we go. So, again, S stands for special job. They're both services. One's around in a program. The other one's a special job. Again, it does call them out separately so you can tell the difference. Uh, P stands for payment. All right, this is where you told the system, "Hey, this customer gave us some money. This is not adjustment. This is a payment that got entered." Now, again, because once you post something, you can't delete it, as well as we cannot change this amount. All right, that's why we have those journals: the production journal, the payment journal, and the adjustment journal, because that way you can make sure that information is as accurate as possible before you post. Because again, once you post, we can't delete and we cannot change the amounts. There are a few things we can change, and again, I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, another entry is A for adjustment. Okay, so again, this is some you know, and had to manipulate the money on the account. Um, in this case, I did a write-off debit of a thousand dollars, and again, this is just garbage data, but same premise. Now you'll see there also is a GG adjustment. These are the ones that are done by the system when certain prepay uh, things are triggered. That's why I always tell people, please do not ever use the KK, GG, II, JJ, all, um, 31801, there you go. Oops, yeah, that's okay. Uh, do never use the double repeating character codes on this adjustment screen, all right? If you do, you can cause some problems. And again, like I said, we can't delete those transactions out. So there's no way to fix the problem if it starts having an issue. Now, we can do, you know, some 
allocation and stuff, and sometimes we can take care of it. But again, if someone uses these manually, it can cause some wonky things to happen. So please don't ever use those double repeating character codes. And I always stress it every time I talk about adjustments in these videos because I really want to make sure you guys don't use those. Um, as I was saying, though, as you'll see, here's the, um, the adjustment. We also have an I, which is an installment charge. All right. So again, if the customer set up for an installment plan, when it posts production, or when it posts installment charge, either the system does it automatically because you turn that on, or you do it manually. Again, the entry will show up as an I. All right. And then down here is an N. This is your net promoter score. This is that thing that's on the uh, the invoices. It says, hey, on a scale of zero to, or one to ten, how likely you recommend it to your customers? They fill that out. You, they send their payment on the remit portion, and then you put that NPS score right here in this little box. And then it's going to be actually created as an entry in the customer's history. And what's cool about that is you can uh, actually run reports saying, hey, who you know, what neighborhoods have really low NPS scores because maybe they're not satisfied with the service? Is it because maybe the neighborhood's picky? Is it because maybe the technician's not doing his job? So again, you can keep track of it. This is the only entry you can delete because it's not a financial one it was done put in with a payment but again everything else you can't delete this is again this is the only one you can delete and that's that little red x there all right we'll take uh we'll delete it later on all right so let's go back to our treatment where's that first treatment there do 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 no nope, i want that first one with the actually be a charge on it Okay. Now, as I said, there are some things you cannot change, but there are a few things you can just in case you made a mistake. Okay. For example, one thing you can change is the transaction date. The transaction date is the date that you told the system the work was completed. The transaction date is not the day you actually put it into the system. All right. Um, so again, let's say this work was actually done on the 24th. We can double click the date. It's going to ask us for our user ID and password. I'll throw your user ID in there for you. And it's going to ask you what is a new date. And again, like I said, let's say it's 04-24-2015. Uh, we hit replace. Now that transaction has a new transaction date of the 24th. So if we come back here, there it is. Now anytime you manipulate the dates or anything like that, or if you do at reallocations, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit, always make sure to go to the aging tab and age the account. The reason why is, is because when you're manipulating the information that could potentially throw the customer on credit hold, the next time it does its nightly backup and ages all the accounts, this way you can double check to make sure it doesn't uh, throw them on credit hold because you don't want to overlook them because once they're on credit hold, it won't pull work for them uh, normally. Okay, so again, as I was saying, you can change the date of the transaction. Uh, there we go, go back here. Now, um, we can change the post because again, the post it is when it was actually put into the system. It's gonna tell you the date, the time, as well as the person that did it. That's also why it's a good idea that every person has their own login for service assistant. Now, you hosted customers, you have that hosted login. And that's that VMware login to get to that virtual desktop when you uh, connect to our servers. Um, again, you can have employees share that one, but like I said, as far as the service assistant, this is why it's a good idea to put that in there or to have each employee have their own ID so that way you can keep track of things like that. All right. Uh, text. This is the person that did the work. All right. Again, maybe that person was supposed to do the work and someone forgot to update it when they were actually posting production. They just left the default name in there. Again, this is one of those things we can change. We can double click the technician. It's going to ask us for our password. It's going to ask us, well, who it is. And well, maybe it wasn't Cindy. Maybe it was me, the real green ninja that did it. So I'm going to hit replace. And now when we go back to that transaction, do, 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 got to remember it's on the 24th. Again, all before all those adjustments and everything. There we go. You'll see. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is one of those screens. As you guys probably know, um, playing around with the software, some screens you have to, you know, change tabs, refresh. Some of them you have to close and reopen the screen. Um, this is one of those changes where you have to close and reopen it to reflect the change. But again, now this technician has credit. Or maybe there's a crew and you only put the first person in. You can go through and add the crew if needed. All right. Now, also on the screen is this note field. This one right here. This is notes when you put in production. This is that little notes right there. These sometimes parts of the software call them production notes, other parts call them service notes. But the notes field, again, might be something your technician saw. Again, double click the area where you type something in there where it would appear. Type in your note, replace. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. There we go. And you'll see now that note is in there. All right. Um, this prepaid discount uh, I, um, indicator right there, this is not something you can change. Again, this means that the, the treatment was set up as part of a prepay when it was posted into production. All right. Um, if you make a mistake and accidentally post into production and forget to do the prepay, 
Um, there are some certain things you can do to fix that or to, to correct it. Uh, again, I plan to do another video on that, but for the most part, uh, this right here, if you call me up and say, hey, this customer is set for prepay, and when I post production, it didn't take the money out of the prepay, it created a remit, I will, wait a minute, let's look at the history. Oh, you know what? And I'm going to show this one right here. You say, oh, there's no prepay code there. So when production was posted, it was not set up for prepay. Someone might have gone in there and fixed it after the fact. But again, this prepay indicator is going to be here, as well as a discount indicator. But pretty much any of these financial numbers here, we cannot change. All right, again, like I said, there are certain other things we can change. Okay, so going back to treatment here. Um, down here in the bottom area, this is the grid. This is the payment grid, I think it's called. Um, at least that's what I call it. And this shows you any payments that got applied towards the service. So, for example, the payment that was put in on 426 got applied towards it when it was posted in production because, again, this was a prepay. If this was not a prepay, and do, 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 so for example, I think the installment was not prepay. There we go. See, again, no prepay code. Oh, I guess I already posted the payment on that. But again, if it was not a prepay and no money has been applied or adjustment made, like a credit on the account, then that would actually be blank. Uh, so again, sometimes you may have to reallocate things if it's not quite looking how you want. And there are some things you won't be able to reallocate. Um, again, I had a customer, and again, you guys are my customers. Um, I had a customer call up, and they're having some trouble with their uh, customers, their, their clients going on credit hold. Well, what happened is, is, like three years ago, someone used the JJ adjustment code manually to reverse a prepayment, and it messed things up here in 2015. So again, that's why please don't ever use those double repeating character codes, especially if you guys are brand new. Make it a habit not to use them. But as I was saying is, there are some things we can reallocate, but the JJ code we are not able to reallocate to, and they're going to have to keep an eye on those clients just to make sure those clients don't end up going on credit hold for some reason. All right. Um, so as I was saying, let's go back to that treatment here. Where's my LO1? There we go. So again, there are certain things we can change. Now, on the lower right-hand corner, you're going to see a little plus minus button. This is going to take you to the condition and product details. When you click it, you'll see there's a yellow area, there's a purple area, and that's the same areas that are on that production screen. Again, you want to try to make sure it's all accurate when you post before you hit the little post button here on the production screen. But like I said, if you make a mistake, it happens. There are some things we can uh, we can correct. Um, to change something like the target condition codes, you're not going to click on the grid or any of these fields. You're actually going to click somewhere in a yellow blank area when it's not on a word. Again, double click it, put in your password, doo -doo -doo, and then make your correction. So maybe you actually saw some uh, bare spots or something on the lawn. Um, the rating here, uh, again, is you know how nice the lawn is. Now, uh, I did have found out recently that the zero rating means it's like really bad. Nine mean rating means it's really good. And we do have a report. There's one report out there that you can actually go and look for people that have a very low rating property just to see what's going on. Again, wind speed, direction, temperature, pH, you can replace all the, or correct all those as needed. Um, if we go back to the treatment here, and the purple area, again, is the products. This is where you're going to go through. Uh, put my password in there. There we go. And then I can say, oh, well, it wasn't fertilizer. Maybe it was, I don't know, weed control. All right. And again, maybe it wasn't 10.8. Maybe it was actually 12. So again, you can change certain things. Um, let's say it's, it was actually from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Why? Because that's easy to do. And I do not know why my computer's going bling. Uh, and again, it's going to take the crew, elapse, and man hours. Now, one thing to be aware of, though. If your service is done by man hour rate, if it's charged by man hour rate, you will not be able to update the price of it. I mean, you could update the time and everything, but you will not be able to update the pricing simply because you're pricing by man hour. And that again, that's why we have those journals to make sure everything is correct. Uh, let's go back to the treatment here. All right, so again, these are the things you can change. Over here on the right-hand side, it's going to show you what the charge is, if there was any discounts or any taxes that were applied, what the net amount is, the net balance, if there was a prepay balance or remit balance at the time of posting. So again, the net prepay and remit are only going to show you the balance at the time of posting. So again, you'll see here we have a prepay balance of 334, but right now we have no current prepay balance. So keep that in mind too, because I had one customer uh, that I talked to who had a little um, little trouble uh, understanding what that was meaning. So again, it's kind of a snapshot of where the account was at the time you posted it. All right. If money has been successful or fully applied towards the service, so it's completely paid off. All right, so again, this is a 33, 34 uh, net amount. There was money set for prepay. The, the payment applied 334, 34. It will then fill in a pay date. This pay date tells the system 
that the service has been completely paid for. All right, and the reason why that's important is because over here, this little dollar sign button, you can tell it to display open invoices. Open invoices are going to be any transactions that either are not fully paid for or payments or adjustments that have not been fully applied to something else. All right, so again, you'll see here we have some um, money here, and we can hit the little reallocate button, and you'll see there's an open amount of 128.95. So again, like I was saying, um, that's how much money is sitting in that payment. Uh, cash payment made on the 26th, which I can then apply towards this um, service or adjustment as needed. All right. So again, as I was saying, there are sometimes uh, things we can fix, but like for the most part, um, anything with like the financial or whatever, we really can't uh, <laughs> we can't delete or, or change the numbers themselves. Uh, so let's go out of the open invoice thing. So again, a nice open invoice um, that button here makes it a little easy to figure out where the um, you know account stands. You know what has been paid for, what hasn't been paid for, what money's floating out there. Uh, because again, you can have a zero balance but still have open services because the money has not been um, allocated completely. All right, or properly. Okay, so uh, getting back to this here. Now, another cool thing you can do is down here, there's a little button that's called SC, which stands for service call. I can actually create a service call from this screen right here. I can go through and say, you know what, there was a precondition of bare spots, and I'm going to go out there and I want to do um, a service call, and then maybe I'll put a note in there saying, um, you know, need to apply extra fertilizer and bare spots again. You know, just something to follow up. Uh, some or Most companies don't charge extra for service calls because it's more of a follow-up visit, but if you do, again, you can always put pricing in there. You can say, oh, okay, 25 bucks for follow-up or whatever, and then you charge a customer 25 bucks for the service call. Well, let me hit my required fields. I had most of these turned off, so there we go. All right. So again, as I was saying, is um, you know these three buttons here, um, you know, get open invoice, to service call, or you can even hit print tra transaction history, and then it's going to throw that customer. So you can actually do a bunch of them if you want. You can just type in the account numbers there, and then of course that appears somewhere in the reports. I don't know exactly where it is right, right off the top of my head, but if we were to do like a preview, it would look something like this. And again, this is up to you if you want to do it. Do, do, do. There we go. And again, because so, the customers say, well, what has been done? And again, you'll see the final transaction history also has the notes and everything um, on the different um, um, uh, transactions that were entered. <laughs> so, and of course, you can select the date range and stuff. So if the customer kind of wants to know, you can even say, okay, you know what? I'm going to show all transactions from the beginning of time to the end of time. And then, you know, you can show them the transaction history. And if they want to try to figure out or if you want to help them, that's fine. Okay. Um, so again, um, you know, transaction history, open invoices, service call. Like I said, there are some things you can change, some things you can't. Now, as far as the special jobs, so again, like I said, this is a treatment. This is a, uh, one of the T's. As far as special jobs, pretty much the same thing. You can change the date, you can change the notes, you can change the technician, you can do a little plus minus, you can change the condition codes, and so on and so forth. Um, also on treatments in um, special jobs, you can change the billing type as long as it was not set to installment when you posted it. All right. So again, um, if this was actually supposed to be regular invoice for whatever reason, we can double click that, type in my password, hit enter, change it to the other type of billing type I want it to be. Let's say regular invoice, hit replace. Very rarely should you have to change that. Usually when you have the job or um, you know, set up on the customer screen, uh, customer's account, the program or special job screen, you already have it uh, the way you want to build them. The only time I've ever seen it really needed to be used is if you had like a repeating special, like a lawn mowing, and you're doing monthly invoices, and the billing type has to be statement only when you post production. Um, you know, you might have to come back in here, change it from regular in invoice to statement only in order for it to get show up on the monthly invoice. Of course, you can't have printed a regular invoice at the time. You'd have to do like a work order, or I'm sorry, a worksheet or a driver's report. Okay, so getting back to this. As I was saying, is special jobs and treatments, um, those are pretty much the two transactions where you actually went out and did stuff. Payments. As I mentioned before, payments here, you can change a few things. We can change the payment date. We can change the note. We can change the check number if we want. Okay, so we can double click on that. And maybe uh, when you put the payment put in, someone forgot. It needs to be actually check number 1234. Hit that and press enter. And now the check number is going to be 1234 on that payment. So again, like I said, there are certain things you can't change, but we can't change the number, the amount. We can't actually change how much was entered on the payment. Uh, do, do, do. Where did that payment go? I was looking. Oh, there it is. Okay, one, two, three, four. Now, another cool thing you can do when you have a payment is um, you can actually generate a receipt. Now, this is not a statement. This is not an invoice. All right, you can even email it to the customer. So again, as long as you're set up to send emails and they have an email and so on and so forth. But it's really cool. You can send them a receipt. Now, again, it's not going to tell them what they paid for. It's just a receipt saying, hey, 
you gave me money, this is how much the amount was, and you'll see again um, there's no like remit portion or anything like that. All right, so again, a lot of people like to email the receipts if their customer's kind of worried about that. Um, on the payment screen, you have a reallocate button. Uh, the only time I really haven't seen the reallocate button show up on a payment is when it was like a credit card transaction that was done through like CAW, because on CAW, they actually specify what they want to pay for. All right, so they actually say, okay, I'm paying for this, this, and this, and it automatically gets allocated to the services they want to pay for, and because of that, you can't reallocate it. But the ones that are man entered manually, even if it's a credit card entered manually on the payment screen, we can hit the reall reallocate button. Again, we could go through and we can disconnect all the money from this payment, like so. There we go. So you'll see none of the services have the money applied to it. The money is just floating out there, and then I can go through and you know figure out where I want to put that money. At the end of the day, and again, that's where that open invoice thing comes up, and like our open uh, transaction, and you'll see again, there's that payment because we disconnected it from everything, um, and then again, I can hit the reallocate button, and then I can allocate it accordingly or however I want. Usually, you don't really have to worry about reallocating too, too much. Um, the only time I've ever seen people really get picky about it is if they say, we absolutely made sure this payment applies towards this service, because when you put a payment in, uh, and you don't allocate it on the payment screen. You know, when you click on the payment screen here and you don't actually check mark what they're, the payment's going to, what it's going to do is it's going to apply it to the oldest balance first going forward. And the reason why that's a good idea is because it kind of helps keep people off a of credit hold. Because maybe you did a service for them back in, uh, you know, let's say April of 2015, and every payment you've entered in has been allocated to everything except for that service. Well, eventually they're going to want a credit hold because that April 15, uh, 2015 service has not been paid for. And it doesn't have a pay date yet. And uh, if you didn't allocate it, when you just put the payment in right away, and of course we're not talking about prepays, we're just talking about regular payments, um, it's going to apply towards the April 15, 2015, and then again, satisfy going forward. The remit balance is going to be the same. It's just a matter of how old of a, a debt or how old of a remit that that payment got applied to. All right, so as I was saying, there are a few things you can change. You can change the check number. Again, it's going to show you if the payment was part of a prepay. It's going to show you in there. Now, I did another video. Um, if you have a payment that the person pays, part of it's going towards a prepay, part of it's going towards a remit balance, or part of it's going to be a credit on their account, just a straight credit, not a prepay, when you enter the payment, it will create two payment transactions. Okay, so you could put in a payment of, like, say, $1,000 in. Well, if 851.05 of it is going towards the prepay, then that will be split, and it's going to say 851.05 towards the prepay, and it's going to be 148.95 towards um, the credit or whatever the remit was. Actually, this is opposite. This actually looks like it was originally the uh, 148.95 went towards the services that would have been part of the prepay, and then uh, the 851, again, just got applied as a credit on the person's account. Adjustments. Again, there are a few things you can change. You cannot change what kind of adjustment was, but again, you can change the transaction date. You can change with the responsible um Oh, maybe you can't change the responsible employee. I thought you could. Well, I guess not. Um, uh, let's see. You can't change the ID number. Now, just like the payment screen, you can do a credit debit memo. So when you click on there with a little preview so you can see what it looks like. Doo -doo -doo. And again, it's going to show if you have a note for that um, adjustment, it's going to have it in there. So if I go through here, double click on this field, put in my password. There we go. And I'm just going to type some random stuff there. Replace. And, you know, maybe the customer calls up and says, hey, I thought you were going to give me a $25 adjustment towards that, uh, you know, towards the, um, um, you know, running over my lawn sprinkler head or whatever, you can go ahead and generate uh, a memo. And again, you'd have in your description, um, you know, what the uh, adjustment was for. And again, that description would be this notes field. And that's why I always tell people, if you're doing an adjustment, please put at least some note in there. Because what's going to happen is if you call me up six months from now and you say, hey, why was a $1,000 adjustment made? The only the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this notes field and say, well, it was made because of or, or again, whatever notes in there. And if there is no note in there, the only other thing I can say is, hey, well, you might want to talk to Real Green Ninja and why they made an adjustment on 426.15 at 12.24 p.m. And now, again, if that was the person that called in and said, well, that's my ID, said, so, well, that's why we want to have, we recommend having different people have their own IDs. So, again, it just makes it easier to keep track of stuff. Okay. Um, so, as I was saying, adjustments are going to be in here. And, again, like I said, please do not, um, you know, use the double, char double repeating character adjustment codes. I keep saying it over and over again. Repetition helps with learning. Um, but as far as the, uh, the transactions, again, there are certain things you can do. For example, let's say this person calls up. Let's say this right here. The LO2 has a 5% prepay, and maybe the prepay percentage was incorrect. 
normally what you could do is just do an adjustment on the account for the additional 5% prepay or debit. Uh, you know, if it's supposed to be like 10% and you accidentally did 5%, you can just do an adjustment on 5% and say, okay, well, here's your current remit. Um, but if you need something that actually shows that amount, like on an invoice, like a regular invoice, you can reverse transactions in the system. Reversing a transaction essentially is going to tell the system, don't count this. And the way it does it is it creates an adjustment. That's why a lot of times we say, if you can avoid reversing things, tr avoid it. Just do a straight adjustment, a regular adjustment by going to the adjustment screen and just put a little note in here, again, explaining why this adjustment was made. The reason why, again, because if you reverse certain things, especially if something's prepaid, it can cause some wonky things to happen, all right? But like I said, if you absolutely, absolutely positively have to have something in there. So, for example, if we go up to this uh, correlation job right here, and let's say this was supposed to ha be $100, and we want to give them an invoice that says $100. Um, if we go to, uh, do, 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 where is, is that part of the service? Um, where was that from? Uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, History. Was that that wasn't a service call, was it? I don't think so. Nope, special job. Oh, 3 4 2015. I'm going to pause here for a moment just to see if I can find where that service was. Okay, figure it out. <laughs> um, I, well, essentially, what it is, I was messing around with something before. Um, that LES is actually an estimate service. So when I went, oh, by the way, I remember I told you you can actually um, go to the job itself. Um, you can actually double click here and again open up the program job screen and again you see it was an initial service or it was a uh, um, estimate service that I had set in the system. Uh, but as I was saying, if you do need to show something that actually has a, the pricing that, that reflects the price that the customer was expecting or, or wanted to pay or whatever and they are insistent on it, you can reverse it. Like I said, we don't recommend reversing um, the... Um, I'm just going to go post-production on this here real quick. Um, oops, then we need to be printed. We don't recommend reversing if you can get away with it. If you have to, do it. But again, we prefer if you don't because, like I said, especially when you start getting prepay stuff, and that's why I'm not um, going to try reversing a prepay. So again, let's say this aeration was not supposed to be 39.58, and again we go to the history tab. There's that aeration I just posted. Let's say it was supposed to be fifty dollars. All right. Like I said, recommendation: do a forty-two. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, ten dollar and forty-two cent adjustment. So it reflects they show fifty. They owe fifty bucks. But if you need to give them an invoice that shows fifty bucks, then you can hit this little undo arrow, this little reverse transaction arrow. It's going to ask you again for your password. So um, again, only give permission to people the reverse transactions that you want to be able to have them reverse transactions. If you use products on the service, you can tell it to reverse the products that were used. And what it's going to do is going to add that amount back to your product account. Again, with an aeration, you probably wouldn't use fertilizer. I was just doing it because I was messing around with something before. It's also going to ask you for an adjustment code. As I mentioned before, please do not use the double repeating character codes. Even though you think it might be appropriate, the double repeating character codes are special. And if you use them, you can cause some weird things to happen. Very rarely would you actually use a double repeating character code. And usually that's one of those things where I'm like, okay, let me talk to one of our second level techs. Talk to second level techs. Talk to level techs says, yeah, go ahead and do it. I come back and say, okay, let's go ahead and try this. But again, like I was saying, you know, please use don't use those double repeating double repeating character codes. Most people tend to use posting error credit or posting error debit as catch-alls. And I'm gonna go ahead and use posting error credit right now. Now, one nice thing about doing the reverse transaction, it's only gonna show you those credit codes. So you don't have to worry um, that you accidentally picked a debit one. So we're gonna do reverse products use, posting error, and hit reverse. Okay? It's going to put this adjustment on the journal, on your adjustment journal again. The adjustment has not been actually applied to the account yet. Yes, we're going to go to the journal. There's that adjustment. And then I'm going to post. I can print preview or cancel my journal. I'm just going to cancel for now. And then again, now you'll see this line item is yellow. As I said before, we cannot delete the information. But the line being yellow tells me that this has been reversed. If we go back to the customer screen, you'll see there's that S service, but it created a second one, uh, second number one, which is in a Y status. And this is the one I can now pull. In this scenario, where it was supposed to be 50 bucks, I would now go into edit mode. I will change it to the correct amount, save it. And now I can generate an invoice. Do, do, do. Boom, boom, boom. 
that shows that $50 charge. All right. Like I said, if you can get away with it, just do a straight adjustment. All right. By the way, don't even bother reversing adjustments because essentially you're adjusting an adjustment, which you're doing an adjustment anyways. So why take that extra step and create all those little yellow lines and stuff all over the place? Um, so like I was saying is, again, it's yellow. And then what you would do is you'd come back in here and now you'd post production. Again, you'd, you know, correct the information or put whatever information in there. Uh, put the date that it was done. Again, you know, let's say, well, what date did I put in there originally? Let's see here. Done date is 530. So again, we're going to go ahead and put in the 530 because that's the date it was work. All the other information, who did it, so on and so forth. Boom, 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 and then save, post, cancel, yes, turn that off, close that, go back to history, and again, there's that $50 uh, correlation. So like I was saying, we can't delete, but we can reverse, and if, and if you really have to, you can reverse it, but like I said, we try to say get away with adjustment if you can get away with it. All right, um, I don't think if there's anything else on the history tab that I want to show you. Oh, uh, one thing you can do, um, I've, I've kind of seen it um, lately. And again, it's just personal preference if you want to do it or not. Under your company parameters, financial parameters, and adjustments, you can change the color and background of the, of the text in the background of certain adjustment codes. So if you want certain adjust, adjustment codes to really stand out, you can change that text color and background color. And then when you go in the history tab, it's going to change. So let me, let me find that D1 here. Since I'm already in the system... And we're already a half an hour. You probably got another few minutes to go. There's my D. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go to edit mode. I'm going to... Oh, I lose it. Hold on. Do, do, do. There's my... Okay. I could put, click on the D again. There we go. Let's get it over. Okay. So I'm going to change it to, let's say, white text. Okay. With a red background. Because, again, I want it to stand out. Close. Save. Close. And I'm wondering if it will change immediately or I have to close and reopen. There it goes. And again, you can make it stand out. <laughs> so um, like I was saying is, you know, I've seen this uh, lately, especially if you're concerned that your employees are using um, some adjustment codes, certain adjustment codes. Um, you know, like I said, you can make it stand out. Uh, I think, let's see here. I think that's it. Yeah. So pretty much uh, consolidated history will in detail will change the view of it. So if you come in here and you're like, well, hey, where's my bottom grid? Click the detail. It'll pop that up. If you come in here, it looks like this or you want it to look like this. Again, it's consolidated history. Um, down here, this is detailed information about the transaction itself. As I mentioned before, um, you know, you can reverse, but we cannot delete out of the history tab. So um, I hope this helps and you guys have yourself a wonderful day.